Did he stop calling my goddamn phone? I ain't have to do with that. Oh yeah, Jay says stop calling him two motherfuckers. And you better not kept Diddy's life has been a whirlwind of scandals lately, and just when we thought things couldn't get any wilder, Snoop Dogg might be about to drop some heavy truths. Snoop and Diddy have been tight for years, dating back to their days at Bad Boy Records and Death Row Records. Their bond was so strong that even their kids became best friends. Snoop shared how his and Puffy's sons have been best friends since they were six or seven years old. This friendship wasn't forced by Snoop or Puffy, it was a natural bond formed by their kids. But then, Snoop dropped a bomb in a recent interview where he spoke about gay rappers in the industry. Fans speculated that he was throwing shade at Diddy. The big question is, if Snoop and Diddy were so close with their kids being best friends, why would Snoop have beef with Diddy now? While Snoop shared his side of the story, many believe he might be bending the truth. According to Gene Deal, Diddy's former bodyguard, Snoop might not be telling the whole story. In an interview, Deal commented on how Snoop spoke about Biggie, making it seem like he was much closer to Biggie than he actually was. Deal pointed out that Snoop might be pushing a narrative that sounds good for the media, rather than reflecting reality. Deal recalled an incident where Snoop claimed to have been scared for his life while on a plane with Tupac. Deal found it hard to believe that Snoop was so close to Biggie when Snoop didn't visit Biggie while he was in California for three or four weeks before he died. If the bond was as strong as Snoop suggested, why didn't he spend more time with Biggie? MCA, in an interview, shared his opinion on how Biggie and Puffy should have handled their time in LA after Tupac's death. He believed they should have kept a low profile, focusing only on promoting their album and staying out of the public eye. Deal agreed with this perspective, recalling how Biggie was supposed to stay local, do radio shows, and attend the Soul Train Awards, but not much else. However, Puffy's love for partying led Biggie to the Vibe Party, which tragically became the last party Biggie ever attended. Despite the tensions and the tragic events that unfolded, both Snoop and Diddy had a complex relationship with the East Coast-West Coast rivalry. During the MW Video Music Awards, Suge Knight, another key player in this drama, made it clear that Death Row Records wasn't looking for trouble, but would bring it if necessary. The rivalry was intense, but there was still a sense of mutual respect, with both sides recognizing the importance of their music. Things have gotten even more complicated with other hip-hop legends stepping in to share their versions of events. Napoleon and Nas have recently spoken out, aiming to clear the air on what really went down. Nas in particular has shared his side of the story about his relationship with Tupac, which contrasts with Snoop's version of events. In one interview, Snoop claimed that he saw Nas and Tupac meet in Central Park in New York, According to Snoop, Nas had a hundred goons with him, and if Nas had wanted to, he could have had Tupac dealt with then and there. However, Nas responded by saying that Snoop's story wasn't entirely accurate. Nas recounted a different experience, where he and Tupac had a tense but ultimately respectful conversation. Nas explained that he and Tupac had crossed paths several times, but their relationship wasn't as hostile as some might think. He acknowledged that there was tension, but it wasn't personal. Nas was more interested in clearing up misunderstandings and moving forward. The two had planned to squash any beef they had in Vegas, but unfortunately, Tupac was killed before that could happen. Napoleon also chimed in on this story, giving his perspective on the encounter between Nas and Tupac. He emphasized that both Nas and Tupac handled the situation like gentlemen, showing maturity and restraint. Napoleon pointed out that the encounter wasn't as hostile as Snoop described. Instead, it was an example of how two hip-hop legends could address their differences without resorting to violence. Napoleon was critical of Snoop's portrayal of the event, suggesting that Snoop might have misunderstood or exaggerated certain aspects. According to Napoleon, Snoop wasn't even present during the crucial moments of the encounter, he recalled how both Nas and Tupac had deep respect for each other, and that respect was evident in how they handled their meeting. Napoleon also questioned the accuracy of Snoop's claims about being present during the encounter. 
He didn't recall seeing Snoop there and suggested that Snoop might have been in the background, not fully aware of what was happening. Napoleon emphasized that the encounter between Nass and Tupac was a significant moment that could have turned deadly if handled differently, but both men chose to resolve their issues peacefully. This encounter between Nass and Tupac in Central Park is a reminder of how intense the East Coast-West Coast rivalry was at the time. The tension was real and it affected everyone in the hip-hop community, but it also shows how, despite the violence and hostility, there were moments of understanding and respect. Nass's account of the meeting with Tupac highlights the complexities of these relationships. While the media often portrayed the rivalry as black and white, the reality was far more nuanced. Nass and Tupac were both aware of the tension between them, but they chose to address it with maturity rather than violence. Snoop's version of events, on the other hand, seems to reflect a different perspective, one that may be influenced by his own experiences and the narratives that have developed over time. It's possible that Snoop was trying to convey the intensity of the moment, but his account doesn't fully align with the experiences of those who were directly involved. The story of Nass and Tupac's encounter is just one example of how the East Coast-West Coast rivalry was more than just a feud between two groups of artists. It was a complex web of relationships, misunderstandings, and cultural differences that played out on a national stage. While Snoop, Nass, and others continue to share their stories, it's important to remember that history is often shaped by those who tell it. Each person's perspective adds another layer to our understanding of what happened during that tumultuous time in hip-hop history. As more stories come to light, we gain a deeper understanding of the events that shape the lives of these artists and the culture they helped create. The East Coast-West Coast rivalry may have been a dark chapter in hip-hop, but it also produced some of the most influential music and moments in the genre's history. In the end, the stories of Nas, Tupac, Snoop, and others remind us that even in the midst of conflict, there is room for respect, understanding, and growth. Their experiences offer valuable lessons for future generations of artists and fans showing that the power of music can transcend even the most intense rivalries. Diddy's life has been a whirlwind of scandals lately, and just when we thought things couldn't get any wilder, Snoop Dogg might be about to drop some heavy truths. Snoop and Diddy have been tight for years, dating back to their days at Bad Boy Records and Death Row Records. Their bond was so strong that even their kids became best friends. Snoop shared how his and Puffy's sons have been best friends since they were six or seven years old. This friendship wasn't forced by Snoop or Puffy, it was a natural bond formed by their kids. But then, Snoop dropped a bomb in a recent interview where he spoke about gay rappers in the industry. Fans speculated that he was throwing shade at Diddy. The big question is, if Snoop...